So let's look at a representative worker. So here, you know, similarly, we've said there is actually a mass one um, of um, just very small identical workers. They all start unemployed. Um, and so we're just going to look at the representative worker and see how that worker um, behaves. So what's key here is that um, the worker is, uh, is not going to get the same amount of consumption when it's employed and when it's unemployed you know, because there is an, an unemployment insurance scheme uh, and you know it's possible that insurance is perfect in which case you get the same amount of consumption when you're employed or unemployed but as i was hinting at the beginning if you do that it's very you know people are not going to search for a job you know if you know that you can get the same amount of consumption without um you know without working then nobody's going to bother searching for a job because that's costly so it's like unlikely that we, you know, we get to that situation. So to induce search and um, prevent unemployment from being one, you know, the unemployment insurance system is not going to um, allow unemployed workers to have exactly the same consumption as employed workers. So, um, you know, so, so the two levels of consumption are going to be different. But the question is how different are they going to be? That's what we want to know. And, you know, if your unemployment insurance is very generous, and you know, it means that unemployed workers are well insured, then unemployed and employed workers they consume almost the same. If the insurance is not very generous, the consumption levels are going to be quite different. But because we want to study you know, the effect of a change in the generosity of UI and also try to think about what is the optimal level of UI, you know, we've got to allow a different uh, UI system. So to do that, we'll separate um, the consumption of uh, employed and unemployed worker. Now, of course, you know, in practice, uh, the UI system doesn't control consumption directly, you know. So UI system can control, you know, people get an income when they work, um, and, but then the UI system, by giving benefits to workers who do not work and by taxing people who work, is in practice able to decide, you know, how much uh, income people end up with and therefore how much they consume in, in this world. So this representation of thinking that UI controls consumption simplifies analysis, but of course, you know, it's, it's almost what's going on in practice because by choosing how, how much you tax people, how much you give benefit, you can essentially decide how much people consume. Okay? So here we're not going to worry about taxes and benefits which complicate the analysis, we'll just focus on consumption, uh, consumption level. So we're going to assume that uh, if you're an employed worker, So you end up with a job, you're going to consume a quantity that we call C for consumption E. If you're an unemployed worker, meaning you search for a job but you got unlucky and didn't find one, then you're going to consume a quantity that we call CU, which is going to be less than CE. Okay, and basically, the gap between CE and CU uh, is determined by UI. Basically, you know, the UI system controls CE and CU. Okay? Uh, so, if you have a generous UI system, CE is, CE is, is just CU, let's say, is close to CE. If, if you have a, you know, non-generous UI system, then CU is much I should say CU has to be positive, of course, it's a consumption. CU is much lower than CE. Okay? And when we increase and you know when we talk about increasing the generosity of UI, it's going to mean that you know to get um, CE and, C and uh, CU closer uh, together. Alright, so uh, so we have these two consumption levels. These are determined by the UI system. 
So, and we also know that, uh, that workers, they search with some uh, search effort too. So, this consumption level and this search effort, uh, how do they influence the well-being of uh, workers? So, what is the utility function of the workers? So there are several, uh, in fact, there are three elements. Um, so first, we are going to introduce a consumption utility U of C. Okay, and um, that consumption utility will have standard properties, so it's going to be uh, increasing <coughs> because the more consumption you have, the higher utility, and also it's going to be um, concave, so that people are going to be risk averse, which is key here because if you if people were risk neutral, then there would be no need to introduce any unemployment insurance. You know, people wouldn't care. People wouldn't need. To have any insurance, as as uh, as we know, people want insurance only when they are averse to risk. Okay, so and the risk aversion comes from the concavity of uh, the utility function. If the utility function was linear, uh, workers wouldn't be risk averse and then there would be no need to introduce any insurance scheme here. Okay, so we have our con uh, consumption utility. In a, and so that means that, uh, you know, employed worker will have a utility U of C E, an employed worker U of C U. And then in addition, we also have a disutility from job search. Because, of course, if, um, if search wasn't costly for workers, then you know, they could search like, with infinite effort, and as we know, uh, this would reduce unemployment as much as possible. So, it has to be that search is costly so that we have a finite search effort and some unemployment and you know interesting properties. And in fact, you know, obviously search effort is costly, it takes time, it takes dedication, you know, you have to face a lot of rejection. Search is, is quite costly. Um, so the disutility from uh, job search, we call it psi of E. And of course, uh, Psi, uh, this function is going to be increasing, you know, the more effort you put and the more uh, cost you incur. And in addition, it's going to be convex, meaning that as you put more effort, it becomes more and more costly to search. That will be necessary, as you will see, you know, to have uh, a proper solution to our model. Okay, and then uh, something that's going to be kind of a, a good measure of the generosity of UI is that will show up everywhere. So when I say, oh, the generosity of UI goes up, the generosity of UI goes down, here is what I'm talking about. So the generosity going to be well measured by uh, the 
activity gain from that. And the utility gain from work, so it's how much utility you gain by having a job, and that's just going to be, we'll call it delta u, so delta to indicate a difference, u because it's utility, is going to be u of c e, which is the consumption utility you get if you're lucky enough to have a job, minus u of c u, which is the utility that you're left with if you cannot find a job. This delta u, which is u of c minus u of c u, uh, obviously, um, delta u is something that's positive. Uh, but what's, what's, so if, if you have ui that's very generous, we know that the two consumption levels are going to be low. So ui generous, that means that delta u is low. And if you have ui that's non-generous, So it means that you don't give much to the unemployed, then it means that delta u is high. So when we say that uh, we increase the generosity of UI, what we mean is that, that we reduce, it's the same as saying that we are going to reduce delta u, okay? So when I talk and when we think about intuition, I talk about generosity of UI, mathematically, what I'm really talking about is the level of delta u. When I'm talking about increasing generosity, I mean reducing delta u. When I'm talking about reducing generosity, I mean increasing delta u. Okay? Uh, so delta u is going to be a very important uh, variable in the mathematical model. 